Hey, it's your average consumer. I just want to let you guys know that this channel was made with the average consumer in mind. All right, let's get to another tech video. What's going on, everyone? It's your average consumer. Today, I have a review for you guys on the 2012 MacBook Air. All right, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. So here we have the 2012 MacBook Air. And here are the listed specs for those of you who are interested. But I'm not going to be talking too much about the specs because I want to keep this video average consumer ready. But a few things have changed on this MacBook Air and a couple of them are the new USB 3.0 ports that are included here. So now the new USB 3.0 means you'll be able to use 3.0 devices such as like new hard drives or flash drives with this computer and you'll be able to do faster data transfer speeds pretty much like you can move your files between the computer and the device a lot a lot faster now the second change is the new MagSafe connector so here we have the new MacBook Air uh, MagSafe charger and I believe the MacBook Pro uses this as well and here you can see it compared to the old one so they're a bit different the new one's a bit flatter and wider so that means that if you've had an old MacBook Pro or MacBook Air and you still have the chargers, chances are you won't be able to use these to, as a replacement or anything for the new MacBooks. Another welcome change to the MacBook Air is that it now has the 720p FaceTime HD camera. And as you can see here, I'm video chatting with my girlfriend while she eats an apple, and you can see the clarity is pretty nice on there. So I definitely think people who are video chatting and things like that will definitely be happy with the quality that they'll be getting with this. Now enough about the changes, let's talk a bit about the performance of the actual MacBook. Now this thing has wowed me as far as performance goes. It's one of the fastest computers I've ever used, ever. And I really think that has a lot to do with the solid state drive. Now that's also called the SSD for short. But the solid state drive is basically your hard drive and your storage. So where you place your photos, your music, videos, all that kind of stuff, this is where it's placed. So it's just like your hard drive. And the main difference is the way that they're built. Your typical hard drive has like a, it's a mechanical, it's like a mechanical piece of machinery. And it has like a spinning disc that reads the data that you have on there. So usually when you hear your computer humming or you feel it humming, it's the hard drive spinning. It also could be the fans, but that humming is usually from the hard drive spinning. But with this, their belt, the hard drive space is actually made with um, flash memory chips. So they're little memory chips that are placed on the um, insides of the computer. And this is a lot better because that means there's no mechanical or spinning parts inside, which makes it a lot safer. So that means you can move this around and not really worry about messing up anything. Now, what's also great about this is that it increases the speed of your computer drastically. And I think that's really what makes this one so fast. I can open a I can open a application here and it opens almost instantly, whereas a hard drive it would take a bit longer. And I can definitely see the difference in using my MacBook Air compared to my MacBook Pro. As my MacBook Pro has your regular standard um, hard drive, and it definitely takes a lot longer to open up um, applications and pr um, files. So there's definitely a big difference there, and I'm able to see it between the two. And it's funny because my MacBook Pro is actually actually has much better specs than my MacBook Air, but the solid state drive makes all the difference. So I definitely think a solid state drive is what pushes this to be as great as it is and just so you guys know the solid state drive is similar to that of the things inside of your smartphones like the memory in your smartphones SD cards anything portable really it uses flash memory not really the regular hard drives that you um, typically find in computers or external portable hard drives so it's similar to that and it really makes this great for traveling because like I said before you can move this around without worrying about any pieces malfunctioning and it just really makes this great for someone who's traveling a lot or moving from room to room all the time so this definitely helps with the portability of the MacBook Air 
So for those of you who want this for just regular everyday use, such as like things like browsing, you know, watching some videos on YouTube and other things like that, opening Word documents, this is definitely going to be good for you at the base model. I don't think you have to upgrade anything if you don't plan on doing any using any really heavy programming like um, video editing or things like that or Photoshop. If you have if you're planning on using Photoshop and things of that nature like those heavy programs, I would uh, I would suggest upgrading the RAM from 4 gigabytes from the base model to 8 gigabytes because the thing about the Air is that once you get once you purchase it there's no going back. You can't add any more specs to it or anything like that. There's no upgrading it. So it's best to make sure you know what you want to use when you're purchasing this so that you can get the right specs right from the jump cuz you only get one shot. For those of you who are a little concerned about the solid state drive not having as much um, storage space as regular hard drives, you can always get an external hard drive for a lot, for very cheap nowadays. You can find a one terabyte um, external hard drive for like a hundred bucks depending on where you're looking. So storage space really shouldn't be too much of a problem for the speed that this thing gives you. And as for using the base model for things like Final Cut Pro and those video editing software, I've been able to do that much better than my MacBook Pro actually, but it doesn't leave much space to do anything else because the lack of RAM. But I've been able to use it really quickly, faster than my MacBook Pro, primarily because of the solid state drives, being able to read all the files that I'm using at, at once pretty quickly. So I definitely think it's doable, I'm doing it myself, but had I known that I wouldn't be able to upgrade any of the parts, I would have opted for the 8GB RAM version. And pretty much that wraps up my review of the MacBook Air, guys. It's a really great laptop. I would definitely suggest it for anyone who's interested. It's great for college use, great for everyday browsing, and it can even be great for some of those heavier programs as long as you make sure your specifications reach the requirements of those programs. All right, guys, this has been your Average Consumer. Please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section, and you know I'll definitely get back to you. Till the next video, peace.